Hi there, Microbytes. My name is Jonathan. I'm the children's librarian here at the Ashburton Public Library. Um, and today we are creating the reaction time game. So here is my copy here. And as you can see, um, I've done some paper circuitry in mind here, um, which links back up to the micro bit. Um, and this is what we're doing today, is creating the coding for this game. Um, hopefully, maybe one day I might be able to find a way of linking uh, a copy of the image um, of my game. Uh, but until then, you, I'm sure you can figure out a way of creating it for yourself there. Um, I... Ooh, yes, let's get started on the coding. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project and let's call this project Action Time. Action Time. All right, and by the way, this is a two-part video series. Um, we're going to make the first part uh, based on sort of the start mechanism to the game and then the second part of the uh, second video will be on the reaction part of the video uh, of the game so let's get started and we're actually going to take out the yep we can get rid of all that I'm just checking on my other screen there um, so I'll get rid of these blocks we don't need those and because we are making it Hooking it up to a paper, a paper circuit. Um, we're going to use on pin, um, on pin pressed. Um, but you can, by all means, do it um, without this, without the paper circuit. You can do it just with the micro bit by itself um, by pressing the buttons instead. Um, right. So on pin zero pressed. We want to start the game off by running a bit of a countdown. So let's do a three second countdown. So we're going to say three, two, one, and then clear the screen. Screen. There we go. You can put in a block with nothing, no um, leads showing, but this is probably an easy way of doing it. So three, two, one, clear screen. So that's when pin zero is pressed. There we go. Um, now we need to make a few variables. So I might as well sit in here and make uh, the four variables I require. Um, so first variable we need is running. We need one called false start. We need another called just start. And another one called end. Right, so they're the four variables you need there, and then that puts it into alphabetical order. So you got end, full start, running, and start. Right, so the first one we need is running. So set, let me just grab that one. It has a drop down menu to change it. So set, and we're going running. Set running to, and then we're going to say, in this case, we're actually going to say false. So say running to false and set false start to false. Because we haven't actually, we don't want it doing anything just yet. Um, false start is a different program essentially. So all these things are different programs. Um, and that's false as well. Let's 
Right, and now we want it to, now that it's done the countdown, three, two, one, before we go go, essentially, we want to create a random element of time um, because you don't want the person to just be able to figure out that it's exactly sort of one second after it says one go, press the button. We want it to do a random element of time um, to kind of build that tension of not knowing when you're going to need to press the button. So we are going to put in a pause block. So it pauses on that cleared screen. And we want to do it for a second, at least a second, a minimum of one second. But we want to add in a random element as well. So we just need a plus. And we want to change this to 1000. So remember, it's always in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second, uh, plus a random element of time. So, so it's at least one second. Uh, plus zero to two seconds. So it means that it will show up the sort of go thing um, anywhere between one and three seconds because it's one second plus two seconds, which is three seconds. So anywhere between one and three seconds, you can always fiddle with those numbers to whatever kind of time frame you want. That was pretty good. Um, now, the next bit, F. So if it isn't a false start, so if we do it properly, that's what I want to say. Oops, sorry. So if, and we need, it's, whoops, and not, there it is. A little bit tricky. So if it's not a false start, start. So if it's not a false start, then I want you to do this. I want you to start the timer running. Oops, sorry. I need variable start for starters. Oops. Okay, set. So start is in relation to the time. Um, the more, that's correct, running time in milliseconds. So it's the input in more. Um, so set start to a running time in milliseconds. And when that happens, that tells it that running, the program is running. Oops. Sorry. That one there. Set running to true. Right, so if it's not a false start, and in other words, someone hasn't sort of just been sitting there tapping their finger on the button, um, it's to set the timer running, and that means it tells the broker that that is called running. Um, now, when I was researching this, they put in a couple of things. Um, it had no real benefit, but the reason why they put this in here is purely just to make sure there's nothing on the screen when there shouldn't be. So it's sort of just a, um, a bit of a backstop, really, to make sure it does the right thing. So it's 
um, stop animation and clear the screen. So you can actually get away with not having this in here, but it's, it's just a fail safe really. Um, the next thing that is important though, is to come into this little lead box and we want to plot, plot x, y. And what's going to happen is when the timer, once it sort of does its thing, chooses its amount of time, then it's going to plot uh, a point on our micro bit somewhere random in here. So if we put something specific in there, it will always come in the, right, in the same place. But we want it to be a random element again, just to throw people off a little bit because they can't just focus on that one specific um, spot on the screen. They can they have to be sort of looking at the whole screen. Um, just makes it a little bit more challenging. So you need some math blocks in here. We need the um, random again. Random in there and another one there. Now can only be zero to four because that's the number of rows there are. So you're gonna randomly pick a plot zero to four. Oops. All right, so let's just uh, give this a bit of a trial run. So we're going to hit zero. So that's our start button. It goes three, two, one. It waits anywhere up to three seconds and then shows us a dot. Excellent. Okay, that is essentially the, the entire starting of this game. In the next video, we're going to show you the reactions out of the game. So what happens when we press the button? Uh, this game can be created for up to two players. Um, which is nice and simple because you only have to do it do the run the build the code once for player one and then you copy it for player two um, just modify a couple of things but it's nice and simple all right we'll see you in the next video